All right, let's get you out the door here on our Thursday morning, or as we call it, Friday Eve here. We're starting off with some showers moving into the area, and by rush hour, there could be even be a few thunderstorms. Not severe, but as we move through the afternoon, scattered severe storms develop, and again, some of those could be quite strong, high in the low 80s. Kim? All right, well, no storms to worry about right now. We're looking at dry roads. This is I-696 right at I-75. Light traffic volumes to start off the morning and still accident-free. All right, thank you, Kim. Another big jackpot is up for grabs after nobody won the Powerball last night. That was announced, the numbers in the drawing last night. There you see them. Yeah, the winning numbers are 9, 15, 43, 60, 64, 4, and then the power plate three Powerball uh, was $430 million. Now, since there's no winning ticket, the new estimated jackpot goes up. And this is uh, quite the number, $510 million. How does that sound? Sounds pretty good. We're buying a ticket? <laughs> the drawing is on Saturday, so you have a few days to scrape up your $2 to get in the game. Good luck, everybody. All right, 526 is your time now. And coming up next at 530, stories from Romulus, Detroit, and Ray Township. Also ahead, forget picture frames. We have a unique and inexpensive way to dress up the walls in your house. But first, Nick Monticelli following breaking news out of Plymouth this morning. What's going on there, Nick? A very big fire here at a substation shooting flames into the sky last night. Many people 4300 without power this morning, but when could the lights turn back on? DTZ has some answers. That's next on Local 4 News today. Here's Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And good Thursday morning, everyone. We have two big stories to get you caught up on first. A single blast and fire knocks out power to an entire community. And keep the umbrella handy. We have rain on radar. It's moving in. In fact, some of our western counties and communities are getting wet already. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for waking up with us. Paul Gross and for Brandon once again this morning. And the big weather talk, I guess we've kind of been preparing for this day all week long. It's been kind of the target day for storms, and now some of the ingredients are coming into a little better focus in terms of the severe threat. Uh, right now, boy, it's a warm start to the day. If you're walking out the door right now, just get prepared to be hit in the face with the warm weather because look at this Detroit's at 74 degrees same thing at Monroe Mount Clemens at 70 Port Huron that's the cool spot at 68 and that's still mild so as uh, Rhonda just mentioned we have some rain that's moving into the area there's no lightning with this I've just noticed there's uh, one lightning strike uh, down here in uh, southwest uh, Ingham County and I'm also noticing a couple of strikes this activity moving out of northeast Indiana but again just a couple of downpours here but other than that just uh, general rainfall here moving into the area so not a big deal from a morning standpoint. It's this afternoon where the storms that develop could become severe, especially mid to late afternoon into the early evening hours. High temperature, very muggy, 83 degrees, and we are in the risk area, the slight risk area for severe storms for the afternoon. I've been working between commercial breaks to, to try and come up with some graphics to better explain that for you, and I'll have that for you coming up in about 10 minutes. But right now, let's uh, send it over to Kim and see what's happening on the road. Still a quiet morning, Kim? Very quiet morning. However, we've got construction that could slow you down a little bit. So here's what we're looking at right now over in Detroit, Michigan Avenue, east and westbound lanes from the lodge to cast. There's going to be only one lane open. That's going to be that way until six o'clock this evening. And you also want to keep in mind that Woodward has some construction too over on the westbound side between Sherwood and Mound. Two lanes blocked there until 5 p.m. But then at five o'clock, that construction is still going to be there. That is, but it's going to be reduced until one lane, and that's going to remain that way until noon tomorrow. So something to keep in mind if you do travel over on Woodward. We also have construction on I. I'll tell you more about that coming up at 544. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. We do want to keep you updated on the breaking news out of southwest Detroit this morning. A deadly crash and an investigation now underway, keeping a portion of Junction just south of Fort Street closed. You're taking a live look at the police investigators on the scene. We have confirmed that a woman in her 30s was killed in this crash. We'll continue to monitor the investigation and keep you updated this throughout the morning. We also have breaking news out of Plymouth to update you on this morning. Right there is where an entire community without power this morning after a fire at a substation. This all started last night, though, and right now DTE crews are working diligently to get the lights back on for everyone. Local force Nick Monticelli has been there live for us all morning long. And Nick, I understand that they don't know what caused the fire just yet, but are we getting any closer to figuring this out? 
Not just yet. DTE says it could be days or even weeks until they figure out exactly what caused this. He said there are so many variables. It could have been bad equipment. It could have been an animal. They just don't know yet. But when you do look behind me, you definitely know what happened. That section there is a portion of the substation that just burst into flames yesterday. You can see the charred kind of cabling around the corner. There. You can see the fire. What you can't see yet is the damage to the building here at the substation. Once the sun comes up, I'll be able to show you that a little bit better. But you can take a look at this video. These are the flames that almost the entire community saw yesterday. This fire started at about 8.30 last night. And again, DTE doesn't know what caused it, but they did go into a little bit better explanation on why the fires can get so big. Uh, one of their um, leaders out here says essentially that when a failure happens like this, this substation is powering the entire community here. All 4,300 people, or I should say customers between residents and businesses. So when there's a failure, all of that energy has to go somewhere. In this case, it mixed in with the oil they use as coolant, and that started this fire, and that started that fireball going into the air. So there's a lot of things, a lot of factors at play here, but they do have a plan in place. They are going to get 40 to 50% of the customers back online. Hopefully by late this morning, they're going to start rerouting power from other substations. The rest of them, they're going to bring in portable substations and set this place up, let it up like a Christmas tree and try to get all of those people back online. In the meantime, though, a lot of people last night, they saw those flames from Black Sub even said he saw it as far as a mile away. I heard a big boom and then just started seeing rolling smoke coming up uh, over the horizon. And we walked down, uh, down by the fire and just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was so big, in fact, that it started at 8.30. DTE says they couldn't even get back here until at least 11 o'clock last night. So it took hours just to get that fire under control. But again, they've got a pretty good plan in place. They know 40 to 50% of people could have power back on as soon as late this morning. The rest of them will have to wait and see. We are live here in Plymouth. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. And we sure hope we can get that power turned on sooner than later. All right, Nick, thank you. A pilot for Delta Airlines traveling from San Diego here to Detroit saw something a little strange on Wednesday as he was attempting to land at Retro Airport. The pilot said that a drone came so close to the plane that he could tell officers the color and number of the propellers. That's just how close it was. The flight landed safely at Metro Airport, but an investigation is now underway to determine exactly why the drone was higher than the regulated 400 flying feet and if it entered the airspace at the airport. Two teens will be back in court accused of murdering and dismembering a young man last year. Andrew Fiaco charged with murder accused of fatally shooting his childhood friend and his ex his ex girlfriend Yvette McDonald is charged as an accessory to murder. They're both charged with mutilation of a body and lying to police. A motive for the murder of Stephen McAfee still unclear at this hour. A hearing for Fiaco will continue sometime today. Well, when Mary Grove College made the announcement that they will, the Institute would no longer offer undergraduate programs, it was understood that this coming semester, the fall semester, would be the final one. However, we're finding out that that's not the case. Athletes at Mary Grove are finding out that they now have to leave. Nearly all of the school's athletics programs are shutting down, with the exception of men's soccer. Well, with nowhere to play and no longer having a scholarship, that means students are looking for new schools and coaches and new jobs even. This is heartbreaking. I've really just gotten to know these, these women. This, for me, is one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through professionally. So to have them feel like they have a place to go where they can get help and support, that's, that's what we want. We want them to know that we've got their backs. Well, there is good news for the girls soccer team. Thanks to countless phone calls and meetings, all the girls say that they believe that they will have a school to attend and a team to play for the upcoming semester. So good news for them. Oh, thank goodness for that. But definitely just so jarring all of a sudden, you know, the plans that you had are completely uprooted. Yeah. There's certainly feel for all the students and the faculty there at Mary Grove. It is 537 everyone on your Thursday morning and we don't want to rush the rest of summer just yet, but we do have a travel alert to tell you about for Labor Day. Yes, we do. We'll have that for you coming up. Also shocking video of a group of teens attacking someone's grandmother. Mm -hmm. Please hope showing this will help lead to their arrest. Save that. Ninja Coffee Bar System Pod Free enables you to use your favorite coffee grounds.
Our as seen on TV product testing continues this morning. Coming up in our six o'clock hour, we test the Ninja Coffee Bar. It promises to do it all and claims to be better than a coffee house experience. And you get it right in your own home. Consumer expert Hank Winchester is going to put this one to the test for us ahead at 640. Looking forward to that. It is 541 everyone and uh, this is a bizarre and very sad story. A Milwaukee grandmother goes into a gas station and is attacked and beaten by three teens. She's 50 years old. Her name is Sharon McKinney and she was just stopping to get a drink on her way home when a girl ran up from behind a girl and pulled her to the ground. Shortly after two friends joined in demanding the woman's car keys. That fight went on for about four minutes before those teens eventually gave up and then ran off. McKinney in all of this has a fractured elbow now. She's even going to need surgery on her shoulder. And so far, even though there's surveillance video of the whole thing happening, no arrests have been made. Oh, thank goodness there is surveillance video, though. Hopefully they're able to track those girls down. Airlines are bracing themselves for a huge surge in travel for the last big travel weekend of the summer break. Labor Day weekend. The number of Labor Day weekend travelers is expected to jump 5% from last year's record. Low fuel prices, an improving economy, and decreasing ticket prices means that 16 million passengers will fly over that seven-day period. Thursday, Friday, and Monday are expected to be the busiest travel days. Well, there you have it. Let your weekend take flight at the Selfridge Centennial Celebration. That starts Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Yes, it does. And these Thunderbirds are going to be soaring the sky. Parking and admission to the show are free. So you definitely want to plan to check it out. Selfridge Air National Guard Base's Centennial Open House and Air Show again this weekend starting Saturday and then it goes into Sunday celebrating the last 100 years of military aviation here in Southeast Michigan. On both days, the gates again opening at 8 a.m. and ground displays will start at 9 a.m. Ground displays like what you just saw. The air show will start at 11 a.m. That will show start at 11 a.m. and then admission and parking are free. Also experience a taste of Greece at the Assumption Cultural Center's Greek Fest. It's the perfect summertime four day fun filled event for the entire family with authentic Greek food, entertainment and culture as well. Greek Fest is an annual event that typically draws more than 1200 people throughout Metro Detroit. This year's Greek Fest kicks off today and it runs through Sunday. And the 35th annual African World Festival brings more than 150,000 people to the grounds of the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History in Midtown. And it kicks off tomorrow. It features events, including a performance by a Grammy Award winning nominee, a Detroit Rocks the Runway fashion show, blues in the park entertainment. It's free, three day festival. It's fun for the entire family and it runs from 11 a.m. until 11 p.m. daily from Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday, so check it out. Okay, so who knew this? This Saturday <laughs> is Paul Gross Day yes. at the Farmington what? Farmers Market, yeah. and he's the featured guest. So one of the highlights is a corn roast, fresh corn directly from Michigan farmers that'll be roasted and then sold for $1 to raise money for charity. The farmer's market runs from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Again, this is in downtown Farmington. There will be live music and there'll also be a place for the kids to enjoy at the Little Spouts Children's Activity Center, Little Sprouts Activity Center. And uh, Paul Gross will be there. Are you going to be there the whole time? When, you, when can people come and meet you? Well, until it rains, then I leave. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> is it going to rain well, on there's Saturday? There's a chance for a shower or a thunderstorm in the afternoon. I'm hoping it holds off till after. But the corn roast is the big thing. That's for charity. And you get, you get an ear of roasted corn for a buck. And Delicious. It, like I say, you help support charity. So well, nice. hopefully the rain won't get your hair wet. And but. there is, oh, yeah, like I have to worry about this. <laughs> well, between that and the classic cars on Woodward, we yeah. kind of want to leave Saturday alone. Yeah. We would sure like to, but I'm not sure that we'll be able to. Uh, to do that, but let's get outside right now. We actually have some serious stuff to talk about today. That's a severe weather threat. So let's uh, get you going here. 74 degrees at Metro, the current temperature. The cool spots are upper 60s to around 70. So it is a warm one compared to what we've had in recent mornings. So get ready for that when you head out and get ready for some showers too. Uh, this is not violent or severe stuff. We're just looking at routine showers here. I've been watching for lightning strikes. There's one little lightning strike, a little thunderstorm moving through Ingham County right now. But other than that, uh, there's been a couple of strikes with this activity coming out of northeast Indiana. But overall, again, we're not looking at a severe threat.
it this morning. So here's this batch right here. Something that's really important this afternoon. There's a warm front right here, as I'll show you in a minute. There are some breaks in the overcast here. Now, if we stay cloudy today, that diminishes the severe threat. If we get some sunshine, that boosts temperatures, makes it more unstable, and those violent updrafts into those storms, they go higher, and then that makes them even more violent. And so we're going to have to really watch the uh, development of any potential sunshine today. And just a quick uh, wider view, you can see the well-developed storm system. I always tell you, if you see a comma on the satellite image, uh, well, that's a well-developed storm. So let's break it down for you for today. First of all, the warm front will be coming through this morning. And again, I don't expect severe weather with this warm front. It's what develops behind the warm front that gives us the potential for severe storms. Notice late afternoon we have scattered severe storms in the area. Then this all starts to move out during the evening hours and then overnight not too terrible. We have a cold front uh, moving through, but the critical thing for the potential for supercells, which would give us at least a potential for tornadoes, is the wind. Surface wind this afternoon, these blue arrows are going to be coming from basically the south. The winds aloft, about 20,000 feet up, are going to be coming from the west-southwest. That's called wind shear, and that could cause rotating updrafts into the storms. Now, not every rotating storm causes a tornado, but it's something we have to watch. Lightning, very high potential with any storm, with severe wind gusts, uh, potential really heavy downpours. And again, we're watching for the tornado threat, and I think that's going to be dependent upon if we get that sunshine. All right, high temperature, low to mid 80s today, and it's going to be a steamy one. And then as we move into tomorrow, a lot of clouds, uh, 80 or so, actually most of the area probably in the 70s. Scattered afternoon showers and storms Saturday. Sunday looks warm and, and really nice. It's a nice summer day. And then Monday's eclipse day. We're going to be able to see it here. And don't forget that Ben Bailey is going to be uh, uh, live from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, the point of greatest eclipse. He'll be reporting live on Local 4 News at 11 on Sunday and then all day on Monday. And he will be in the area that we hope will have some sunshine. And hopefully he'll be reporting live from a total solar eclipse. Kim? Absolutely. And I'm excited for the weather that day, 88. It's like my favorite type of day. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Still looking good out there on our freeways. Now we're talking about some construction over on US 23. This will affect both sides of US 23, just south of North Territorial Road here. One lane black for about 12 hours. This starts this evening at 7 o'clock, wrapping up tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. So keep that in mind for your morning commute as well. Now over on east and westbound I-96, some construction there between Livernois and the Davison. One lane black between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. And then on eastbound I-96, for those of you travel, traveling through the Novi area today, watch out for construction here between Novi Road to M5, one lane block there this evening. This starts at 9 p.m., wrapping up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. And if you're headed out the door soon towards I-94, stick around. We'll take a look at that commute with one of our MDOT cameras that's coming up in my next report at 554. Back to you. All righty, Kim, thank you. Time now is 549. And th there was this bizarre police chase that unfortunately turned deadly overnight in Los Angeles. It all started as police were in pursuit of this stolen SUV. It's the white one there on your screen. So after weaving in and out of traffic like what you just saw there and speeding on the shoulder and even driving around in circles, the driver just ditched the vehicle. You even saw the door left open and started climbing on top of this crane. The man climbed all the way up, making his way onto a catwalk. But this hours long standoff took a tragic turn when the man fell 160 feet off the crane and died. It was not immediately clear if the fall was intentional or accidental. Well, let's talk about the film challenge Detroit. We're currently accepting submissions for this year's challenge and filmmakers. You can submit your five to 15 minute video to filmchallengedetroit.com until September 22nd. Yes, and there's a big grand prize for you. If you win this, it's a trip for four to the Sundance Film Festival opening weekend <laughs> and $1,000. And we have received some really good and creative submissions. Yeah. Take a look. Oh God, he just ran off with that woman's purse. We need the, the best crime fighter in all of Michigan. Beanie Man! Beanie Man! The call of the beanie. Looks like it's time to beanie up. It's beanie time. <laughs> this one looks a little more like a comedy. <laughs> so that film is titled, hold on, hold on. It's titled Beanie Man. Beanie Man! Beanie Man. <laughs> 
Beanie Man and the Battle for Brooklyn is what it's titled, and it okay. was submitted by Josh Reed. Not sure if he was one of those dynamic <laughs> actors. Um, this year's theme is Good versus Evil, and you have time to submit a film as well. You can submit your film by September 22nd, and you may even see a clip of it right here on the air. <laughs> yes, you might. We're not you know judging, what? but we are judging. It's memorable. It is definitely memorable. We're going to remember Beanie Man. We're going to be saying Beanie Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's 5.51. Uh, he's no beanie man, but we're talking about Tom Cruise. We do have an update on his condition. Yeah, we do. After that accident while filming, many were surprised to find out the injury that he has from that movie stunt accident. We'll tell you more about that after the break. Stay with us. Beanie man. <laughs> Tonight at 10. Alrighty, here we go with a little light rain in the area. There are a couple of downpours here and there. No lightning in the area right now, but there certainly could be during the course of the morning. No severe weather this morning. We're starting off in the 70s right now. Low to mid 80s and steamy this afternoon, but scattered storms, particularly mid to af late afternoon, could be severe, Kim, so we'll have to keep an eye on them. Definitely want to keep that in mind for your commute later today, but right now we are looking good. This is a look at I-94 right at Merriman. If you're headed out this way, maybe to the airport, this is what it looks like, and it's light traffic volumes, no accidents on your freeways. All right, well, if you're looking to decorate some of those empty walls at home, it could get expensive. Wall art from the store tends to be a bit pricey sometimes, so why not make your own? This craft is called wall nail art, and it's super cheap to make. All you need is a piece of wood, nails, a hammer, and some string. Print out the design you're interested in making. I found this picture of a heart on Google Images. Cute and simple. Cut out the shape and trace it on the piece of wood. Then all you need to do is hammer the small nails along the penciled line about a half inch apart. Once you've finished the shape, now it's time for the fun part, the string. Tie a small knot on one of the nails, then just string the string through the nails however you want. There's no rules. The more you string through, the easier it will be to see the shape you're trying to create. Tie the end of the string to another nail. When you're finished, you can mount it on the wall. Okay. Impressive. You like Where that? Did you put it? She was telling us how crafty she is. I like that. Thank you. And okay, so that was the very simple, but okay. one I want to do is print out um, Michigan, like the mitten. Oh, yeah. That would be a good one. That Not would. too totally. hard. Yeah. Could yeah. you use yarn? You know, yeah, you, like you can use, use like different or colors or whatever. You can get really creative with it. That and was the most simple. That would right. make a great gift, too. Yeah. Very good idea. You could do yeah. someone's initials as a gift, Very someone's true. name. Yes. It's you like all it. crafty. Crafty hey. Kim. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kim, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It is 556, everybody. And production for the latest installment of Mission Impossible is on hold after, if you haven't heard, Tom Cruise was hurt while performing a stunt on the set in London. Yes, TMZ obtained the video of the stunt. Here you see it where Cruise hits the side of a building. He falls short on that jump. He was able to get back up, but reportedly the most serious injury was actually to his ankle. Cruz is known for performing his own stunts in movies, but this time around it did not go well for him. Sounds like it might even postpone the originally planned date to release the that release movie date. as well. Yeah. yeah. Coming up on New at 6, local stories from Dearborn, Ray Township in Detroit. Plus, a carrot wrapped around a carrot. Okay, it sounds weird, but this is an incredible story behind a wedding ring that was lost years ago. Wait it is an incredible story. <laughs> We got details on this coming up, but yes. can you imagine losing your wedding ring? Unbelievable. And then you find it on a carrot? <laughs> we'll show you how that could have possibly happened. We also want to keep you updated on breaking news. We're following of a massive power outage in Plymouth. We are working with DTE to get more information on this power station that exploded and also when power will be restored to thousands of people in the Plymouth area. Plus, a young woman found dead in the middle of the street now Detroit police are trying to figure out how she died. We're back with that and a whole lot more in just a minute. You're watching Local 4 News today. It's Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news is this. A DTE substation destroyed by a massive fire and now thousands of businesses and neighbors are without power. Plus a death investigation is underway in southwest Detroit after a woman was found dead in the middle of a street and a rollover crash on the city's east side sends at least two people to the hospital. Very latest on all of these breaking stories coming up.
A lot of news to get to this morning, but first we're tracking storms as the threat of severe weather heads towards Metro Detroit. Good, good Thursday morning, yeah, everybody. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Knocking on the door to the weekend. The big dream cruise coming our way on Saturday and so much more happening this weekend. Yeah. And we have Paul Gross, who's in for Brandon once again this morning. And this is kind of one of those days we've been bracing for all week. It kind of scares me, though, as we're getting closer and closer to the weekend, Paul. Yeah, well, the severe weather today is not going to affect the weekend, but we do have a shower thunderstorm chance Saturday afternoon, so we'll kind of monitor that and break that down for you a little bit later. Right now, starting off very warm, very steamy. A lot of us are in the low 70s right now to start the day, and even up in the thumb, it's mid-60s, and that's still plenty mild. So we've been watching rain come through the area, and this is not big-time stuff. We're just looking at general shower activity, and as we zoom in, here we have Monroe and eastern Lenawee County here, so we have a few little downpours here, but I'm watching. There's, I'm not seeing any lightning there. A little further to the north. Nice little downpour in southwest Washtenaw County heading probably right toward Ann Arbor. Another one moving into, oh, there's one lightning strike moving into Livingston County. So routine shower activity, a little bit of thunder and lightning. Through the day, we'll see more scattered activity during the afternoon. It's the afternoon stuff that has the potential to become severe. High temperature, low to mid 80s, and keep in mind, we're in the slight risk area, all of us, for severe weather this afternoon. We'll break it all down for you coming up in just a little bit. But right now, let is, let's uh, send it over to Kim with a look at what's happening on the roads this morning. Yeah. All right, well, pretty good right now, but you know what, that rain, it could get a little tricky later. Yeah, it sounds like it could be a, a tough commute. So get an early start. Yeah, definitely. But your lawn needs it, right? <laughs> it does. <laughs> but I'm happy to say that I have listened to all the warnings and I brought in all the patio furniture and the pillows and all that stuff last night. So. Very smart. Good. Let it rain. <laughs> well, let's take a look at what's going on right now over um, over here. So uh, let's take a look at this. So we're pretty good right now. Uh, no accidents on our freeways to report at this time. But this is a look at uh, your roads this morning. This is the lodge right at I-94 and it's very quiet out there. Nothing you need to worry about. We do have dry roads to start off the day. Um, but we also want to take a look at that closure that's happening over on the lodge. Northbound side is closing. I'll help you get around it coming up in my next report. Back to you. Alrighty, Kim, thank you. Time now is 602. Let's get back to the breaking news that we're following all morning long out of Plymouth. That's where thousands are waking up without power this morning after a fire. This fire rips right through a DTE substation. Certainly did. And right now the entire community that that substation powers is wondering when their power will be restored because it was completely knocked out last night. Nick Monticelli joins us now live from Plymouth to explain what the plan is with DTE. Good morning. Well, Anna, here's the plan right here. In fact, I'm going to get out of the way and you can take a look at this. This is what DTE calls a portable substation. It's number 14 and it essentially can do everything that the unit that burnt last night can do. They've got this thing. They just rolled it in. This is phase two of their plan. You can see the crews are working here. They're going to figure out how to hook everything up and get that power back together. I say phase two because phase one is already underway. I do want to show you some video from last night. Take a look at this. This is the fire that destroyed their other substation, their main substation that's here at the corner of Theodore and Farmer in the city of Plymouth. So what happened is that fire started knocking out power to 4,300 customers here in the city of Plymouth. It is the entire city, residents and businesses. So that fire, DTE says, they're not sure exactly how it started just yet. It could have been an animal. It could have been bad equipment. They have no idea. It could be weeks. It could be uh, days until they figure that out. In the meantime, though, they're going to start rerouting power around to get about 40 to 50 percent of their customers back on. The rest of them, it's going to take much longer, and that's what this giant semi just showed up to do to rehook everything up. But the city manager here in Plymouth makes a pretty, pretty good point. It's hot. We've got some severe weather coming in today. This is not the best time for this to happen. Well, certainly this is a pretty significant uh, issue for our businesses and our residents. You know, I mean, it's a hot summer day. We've got some weather coming in. Uh, there are a lot of different issues that are going to be facing our residents in the next several hours here. And, uh, you know, we're working very closely with uh, DTE Energy. They've been phenomenal all night long uh, working uh, the situation and trying to get things back up and running. And when you consider the timetables, you do have to give some credit to DTE. It was yesterday at 830 that this thing blew up over here. In fact, there it is right there over my left shoulder there. That is what caught fire. So by sometime late morning, they're going to have 40 to 50 percent of their customers back on. And then hopefully sometime this afternoon, they'll have a better idea when they can get the rest of those customers back online. But again, this 
is that solution to get the rest of those customers back with power. We're live here in Plymouth, Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. That portable substation is pretty impressive. Massive. Uh, let the crews yeah. know out there. Paul yeah. Gross says that you brought an hour away from that rain moving in, which would and could potentially hamper the efforts there in terms of getting it we, yeah. reconnected. We have small sprinkles right now. All right. Yeah. Well, it's going to get heavier, so <laughs> for Warren. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Also breaking news out of southwest Detroit. That's where a deadly accident investigation is underway. This is the area of Junction, just south of Fort Street. Junction has been closed for the accident investigation, which is beginning to wrap up now. What we do know is that this is a tragedy. A woman in her 30s died in this crash. No word on the exact cause of the accident. And on the city's east side, more breaking news of another crash. And this one, you can barely recognize the vehicles involved in this crash. It was along Canfield and Beneteau. We are working to find out the cause of the accident, also the extent of any injuries to those that were in those badly damaged vehicles. In Charlottesville now, thousands of people gathered on the University of Virginia campus for a peaceful candlelight vigil, taking a stand against hate and violence. The campus is where torch carrying white nationalists marched on Friday. Last night's crowd was peaceful as they came together singing the song We Shall Overcome. A moment of silence was even held for the victims of the violence. The vigil was not publicized to ensure the safety of everyone who attended. And after almost two years of discussion, two controversial Confederate statues down in Lexington, Kentucky could be permanently moved. This week, the mayor of Lexington reacted to the violence in Charlottesville by announcing plans to relocate statues of John Hunt Morgan and John Breckenridge. City Council will vote tonight on a resolution that will allow the city to petition the move. And there's more fallout following President Trump after his response to the violence in Virginia. The president announcing his decision to end two of his economic advisory councils after multiple CEOs quit. President Trump announced his decision on Twitter on Wednesday afternoon. The executives who resigned ahead of the president's tweets were 3M CEO Inga Thulin and Campbell Soup CEO Denise Morrison. Hundreds gathered at the University of Michigan Dearborn's campus for a peace rally last night, showing their support for the victims of the violence in Charlottesville. The group denounced the actions of the white supremacists and also criticized President Trump for blaming both sides for the violence. Former Congressman John Dingell was among those in attendance. Meanwhile, a controversial request on the table at Michigan State University, a group led by a white supremacist, is asking to hold an event on the campus of MSU. The leader of that group is Richard Spencer, who was set to be the keynote speaker in Charlottesville before the violence broke out there last weekend. The university's president, Luann Simon, released a statement reading in part, Michigan State takes seriously its obligations to accommodate a broad range of speech. As our record shows, this university does not determine who can access public spaces based on what they think or say. No word on when a decision will be made. Kwame Kilpatrick is at it yet again, launching another bid to get himself out of federal prison. The former Detroit mayor is representing himself, saying his lawyer, Jim Thomas, offered him bad representation, which is what led to an unfair trial. Kilpatrick is asking for his sentence to be reduced or vacated. The feds have to respond to his request by September 5th. Well, police continue to search for the man who stole phones from this Cricket wireless store on Grand River in Detroit. Well, you just saw what happened there. Surveillance video shows the man snatching two phones out of that woman's in hands. She's an employee there. And then that crook took off. If you have any information or if you recognize him, please contact police. Time now is 6.09. First it was Netflix, then it was Amazon, and now Apple is looking at making its own TV shows. Well, details on all that coming up and how you can get your hands on them. Plus, Jason is here in the carport. Good morning. Good morning to you. A group of young local athletes taking the national stage today with dreams of going international. Their story coming up after we hear a word from our sponsors. Welcome back, everybody. They are playing for a chance to represent the United States on the world stage. And it all starts today. Jason, we are talking about our hometown team in the World Series. 
Uh, you are correct, Rhonda. Today, a team of young baseball stars looking to take a step closer to the Little League World Series. Roll the VO. Gross Point Wood Shores will face a team from Texas tonight in Williamsport, PA, after winning the Great Lakes Regional last week. This will be the team's second trip in the last five years. We spoke to the coach, Jason Hill, about the big battle. They're all of the above, Bernie. They are, uh, they, you know, they are, they're ready to play. I will say that. We are ready to get out on the field tomorrow. Um, as I said, we've been here uh, since our nine-hour bus trip from Indy over here on Sunday evening. And they're, ready, they're excited to get on the field, and I don't blame them. So am I. I'm excited to watch them play tomorrow night and see what happens. Uh, that we shall. The last time the team made it into the tournament, 2013, they were bounced after the first round. Now, to put this in perspective, how, uh, how big accomplishment, uh, how major this would be just to make it to the World Series. Hundreds of teams compete for a spot just in the U.S. alone. Only nine times, nine times, Bueller, since the World Series started in 1957, has a Michigan team made it into the tournament after winning the regional. That includes Gross Point Woods Shores making it in 1979 and Hamtramck in 1959. That team actually went on to win the championship. But not since then has a Michigan team come close. Bernie will have highlights on later editions of Local 4 News. Coming up in the carport at 6.30, we'll sit down with the creators of RoboCop the Musical. Put down your weapons or there will be trouble. <laughs> giving away free tickets. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Back to you guys. All right, sounds good. And good luck to the Gross Point team. Wow, what an accomplishment already. Yeah. I'm now at 15. Let's turn things over to meteorologist Paul Gross as you're tracking some storms headed our way. Absolutely. The weather we get this morning, not severe. It's the weather this afternoon we have to be concerned about, but we're starting off steamy. 74 at Metro, 70 at Howell. Okay, it's cooler. 67 in Lapeer. That's warm enough. 74 right now in Monroe. So, as starting with radar, you can see that we just have kind of a kind of hodgepodge pattern of showers. There's one uh, little thunderstorm with some lightning there in southwest Livingston County, but other than that, we're looking at mainly just showers with a couple of downpours here, but overall it's not violent weather. And what we're watching for today, and this is real important, is the potential for any sunshine because any sun that we get makes the atmosphere much more unstable and gives us more violent updrafts, and that means more violent storms. But notice right here, watch this area right here. You'll see it's open, and then all of a sudden you see some cloud fill in. So that's the key. If it stays cloudy all day long, that's the best news we could get. But if we start getting some sunshine, that's not good news. And you can see, by the way, how well developed and wound up this storm is. This storm is really cranking there up in the Minnesota area, up into northwest Wisconsin. So let's kind of show you the surface map and kind of break it all down for you. Here's the low. Warm front coming through this morning. This is the warm sector, real steamy air. And here's the cold front coming through tonight. So again, the warm front comes through this afternoon. Storms in this warm sector could be severe. I'll break down the threat for you in a second. Then the cold front comes through tonight, shuts down the rain, and we stay mostly cloudy through the day tomorrow. It'll be dry, but mostly cloudy, and then hopefully we maybe get a peak of sun by the end of the day. This afternoon, lightning guaranteed with any storm. Severe wind gusts, definitely a possibility. Torrential downpours, there could be some localized pockets of flooding. I don't think we see a whole lot of hail, and we have to watch. There is a tornado threat this afternoon. We're going to have to monitor that, and I'll explain that in better detail in the next half hour. 83 for the high today, and it's going to be a steamy one. Up in the thumb, you'll probably be in the uh, the upper 70s for a high. And then tomorrow, again, mostly cloudy. 80 in the city, probably 70s for the rest of the region. And uh, basically, a scattered afternoon shower or storm on Saturday. I know we have the Dream Cruise there. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. But Sunday, warming up, mostly sunny. And mostly sunny on Eclipse Day. Mostly sunny on Eclipse Day. And here we have the, oh boy, we're on Belle Isle here. Great looking shot there this morning. You can see the clouds there. The rain not too far behind. So that's our Hanson's weather window on this Thursday morning. Kim? Thank you, Paul. Love that fountain. Beautiful shot there. All right, good morning, everyone. Still looking great on our freeways this morning. No accidents to report at this time, so you should be good to go. But later today, you're going to see some slowdowns over on the lodge because it's closing down for some construction. We saw the southbound lanes close last night. T tonight, it's going to be the northbound lanes. This is from I-75 to Warren Avenue, closing tonight, 9 p.m. It's not going to reopen until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, so this could affect your morning commute tomorrow. Now, in the meantime, to get around this, what you're going to need to do is take northbound I-75 to westbound I-94, or you could use Woodward instead. We also have our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot out and about.
about right now. Over I-75, right at I-696, you can still see it's pretty dark out there, but this gives you a good idea of what we're dealing with, and that is no backups, great traffic flow. Traffic volumes are starting to build a little bit, so just keep that in mind, but we are looking good this Thursday morning. Rhonda. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Kim. Turning our attention to consumer headlines this morning, the Lions theme song hiding in a bag of chips. We'll explain that one to you. Also, Apple, just like Netflix and Amazon, is creating its own original programming. But first, money, money, money. That Powerball jackpot is huge. You didn't win last night, but that's okay because you can still win on Saturday. Maribel Aber joins us now live from New York where you can buy a ticket from there too. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Rhonda, and we can all dream, right? Powerball has climbed to an estimated 510 million prize. There were no winners in Wednesday's uh, $430 million jackpot drawing, making it the 19th straight drawing without a winner. The odds of winning are about one in 292 million. The current jackpot would be the eighth largest U.S. lottery prize in history. Apple is on the hunt for original TV content. Apple executives have been meeting with Hollywood agents and producers to hear pitches about potential shows to purchase and develop. Back in January, Apple CEO Tim Cook alluded to a creating original content for Apple Music. Apple is budgeting about $1 billion to acquire and produce original TV shows over the next year. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. Not every NFL team is included in Tostitos' new Lucky Bags program, but you know what Detroit is. Tostitos is celebrating NFL's team traditions with limited edition Lucky Bags, which includes team-inspired packaging and digital content for featured teams. As for the Detroit Lions, their Lucky Bags promo video includes a refresher on the Lions' fight song, Gridiron Heroes. Rhonda, do you know the words? It has words, right? <laughs> I always kind of mumble a couple of verses, but for the most part, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Maribel, thank you. Time now is 620 and a carrot around a carrot. <laughs> Trust me, it, it doesn't sound like it makes sense. But it does, and we'll tell you about the story behind this unusual find. Yes, this was not done on purpose. No, but before we go to break, <laughs> let's meet today's Facebook friend for today. This is Steve Firestein. He's from East Point, and there he is engaged to his best friend, Dorothy. Yes, and we want to send you a gift card to Tormina's Pizza for being our friend of the day. So congrats to you, Steve, and everybody else. Don't forget, like the Local 4 Facebook page. Once you're there, you'll see that Friend of the Day tab. Click on that, upload a picture, and tell us something about yourself. You might be our next friend of the day. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. It is 624 on your Thursday morning, and just by taking a look at this video, it is hard to believe that no one was seriously hurt. Take a closer look. This is video from a traffic camera in Kansas, and it shows the moment that a truck rams into a barrier wall and then bursts right into flames. Here it is again. Mm, mm, mm. It's not really clear what caused the driver to lose control of that truck, but after the impact, others did get out. They stopped. And they tried to help him, and believe it or not, again, he only suffered minor injuries. Unbelievable. Pretty wild. Paul, over to you. Wow, that's incredible. All right, right now we have generally light showers, a couple of downpours, one or two little claps of thunder in the area, and that's uh, through the morning hours, not severe. We're starting off in the 70s right now, or at least near 70, and then through the afternoon, scattered storms develop. Some of those could be severe. We're going to have to keep a close watch on that, Kim, but uh, things should wind down by mid-evening. All right, well, wow, that video is still in my mind. That was terrifying. Right now, nothing like that on the roads. This is I-96 right at Grand River. We're looking great out here. Dry roads to start off the day, but don't forget your umbrella. We could see some showers later today, as Paul's been telling us. Don't want to forget about that, but we are accident-free on our freeways. All righty, Kim, thank you. 625 now, and they say that absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? Well, for one long loss engagement ring, it beat the odds to turn up in... Well, what you would call kind of an odd way, right? The oddest way possible. Mary Grahams <laughs> never thought that she would see her diamond ring again. She lost the ring while gardening on the family farm 13 years ago. She never told her late husband. In fact, she actually purchased a, another ring, a cheap ring, to try and replace it. And then one day her daughter called her asking if she lost her wedding ring. <laughs> it just doesn't seem real. Inside, it it's, makes me kind of happy. 
I bet it does. Mary says that it makes her son Brian happy too. He'd helped his mother look for that ring all those years ago and was sworn to secrecy that it had been lost. Meanwhile, like the carrot never got picked and that's for what 13 I'm wondering. years. <laughs> and then on top of that, what do you do? Like because it grew onto the carrot, do you chop the carrot up and then get your ring back? Or do you yes. just leave it there and just and say, just wow. And save it and wow. <laughs> that, was, that was remarkable. Yeah, it, it is. It is 626. Uh, next at 630, local stories for you from Plymouth, Romulus, and Ray Township. Plus, a local girl with special needs saves her own money to buy a bike, only to have it stolen. But what happens next? We'll touch your heart. We'll have that story for you. But first, the competition you definitely want to wash your hands after. Oh, yeah. We talked about this this morning. Ugh. Wait until you find out what these people are throwing. It's going to make you throw up. <laughs> Today's top video Gross. is coming up next. What will it come close, everybody? And trust me on this one. This is today's top video about some chips that you definitely don't want to eat. When you go to the Iowa State Fair, locals there say that there's an event that you also don't want to miss. It's the annual cow chip throwing contest. <laughs> chips well, you don't want to eat. Did well, you really is, say that? Well, what is a cow chip, you ask? Yuck! Well, if you've never heard of it, they take great pride throwing dried chunks of cow manure. That's chunks what of a, cow poop. That's, that's what, what it a, is. That's what a cow chip is. <laughs> <laughs> and if you take a look closely, they use their bare hands in that's Iowa. Nasty. This year's winner took home the crown after throwing his chip <laughs> 105 feet. I wonder it's, what he gets. Uh, some sour cream and cheddar cow chips. Yucky. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in a minute. <laughs> Maybe barbecue. Why? Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And we're following breaking news of this, this big fire that turns out the lights and power for thousands in Plymouth. Now DTE crews are there working to repair the damage at this substation. Paul? Well, right now we're watching showers and thunderstorms crossing the area. This morning's storms are not going to be violent or severe. It's this afternoon's we have to keep a very close eye on, and I'll break that down for you just ahead. And our as seen on TV product tests continue this morning. Next up, the Ninja Coffee Bar. Can it really replace your trips to coffee shops to get that wonderful gourmet coffee? Help Me Hank takes it to the experts for a taste test. And our week has been going pretty good. Two out of three isn't bad in terms of our product test. Yesterday, a big epic fail for that Fuzuki foot massager. But the Copper Chef pot and also the, the, flex, tape. the flex tape got the thumbs up. It's going to get a thumbs up from me today, the Ninja Coffee Bar. If Already? Hank, well, if Hank comes in with Sofia Vergara. Oh. <laughs> it, it, thumbs automatic up thumbs automatically, up. Automatically, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Well, okay. She's, of course, the spokesperson for yes. the Ninja and she Coffee does a bar. fantastic job at it, too. <laughs> Let's turn things over to meteorologist Paul Gross. Do you like the Ninja Coffee Bar? Well, I'm, I'm not a coffee drinker, so that's... I, but if just, Sofia Vergara uh, came in and gave you a cup? I'd just kind of take it out. Uh, no, I just... Excuse I me? I wouldn't drink... I don't like coffee. Have you seen the commercial? What about Sofia? I haven't seen the commercial. I haven't seen the commercial. Oh, what about okay. Sofia? Um, well, okay, that's nice. That adds a nice... <laughs> So anyhow, let's talk about what's going on. 74, look at this, 74 degrees at Metro Airport. Uh, some areas are in the upper 60s, but it's a steamy start. The air is calm, so let's get right to radar. For those of you heading out the door right now, this is where the, the activity is, and we'll zoom in on a couple of spots here. First of all, this storm right here, not severe, but we're starting to see a little lightning with it. It's moving generally northeast, just like this. So what we're doing is taking it through the Ann Arbor area, Ypsilanti, Belleville, Canton, Plymouth. Hey, the fellow's working on the, uh, the substation there in Plymouth. This is the this is a thunderstorm that's moving their way, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Further to the north, watching another storm, again, not severe, just a thunderstorm. It's moving right into Howell here, and we're moving eastward toward Heartland, Brighton. Uh, you're going to be right in the south edge of it, then getting into perhaps uh, northwest Oakland County, southeast Genesee County before it's all said and done. So let's erase the arrows and get to the forecast. This morning, we have these showers and storms in the area. Things become more scattered later, but it's the afternoon storms that also have the potential to become strong to severe. And we're even talking about a potential perhaps for some tornadoes. We will break it all down for you. Have a lot of detail for you coming up in just a little bit. But right now, let's send it over to Kim with a look at your morning commute.
All right. Thank you, Paul. Definitely going to be some tricky travel today, but we're lucky right now because we are looking good on our freeways, but that rain is getting started. So be careful as you head out the door. Uh, we do have some construction over on westbound Woodward between Sherwood and Mound. That's going to have two lanes blocked there until 5 p.m. Then at 5 p.m. that construction will still be there, but it's going to go down to just one lane block. That construction will wrap up tomorrow at noon, so something to keep in mind for the next two days. We also want to take a look right now with our Sky 4 chopper out and about over I-275 right at M14. And you can see that it's a little bit dark in this area. That rain is starting to roll in. This is when it's going to get tricky for your morning commute. So again, slow down today. Be careful with those wet roads as you head out the door. And don't forget your umbrella. Over to you. Thank you, Kim. It is 633 now. We want to get back to the breaking news that we've really been following all morning long from Plymouth, where thousands of people and business owners as well waking up without power this morning after this, this fire that destroyed a DTE substation. Yeah, in fact, it happened last night, and that's when the power got knocked out. Nick Monticelli has been there at the scene of that substation all morning for us, and it looks like DTE is bringing out all they can to try and get power restored for folks there. Rhonda, take a look at this. This is what they call a portable substation. This thing on a semi trailer is capable of replacing that entire thing over there. That is the substation that blew and caused that fire yesterday, knocking out power to the entire city of Plymouth. Take a look at this video. The flames were shooting into the sky and DTE says as of right now, they have absolutely no idea what caused that fire. It could have been an equipment problem. It could have been a squirrel gnawing at some lines. They don't know yet, but they did say there is so much power running through there. That's why the flames were shooting the way they were. There's there's a lot of energy. Think about all of the energy that you need to serve all of those 4000 homes and businesses in the area. All of that energy is going through those transformers and uh, a failure in there pumps all of that energy right there into the transformer. It needs a place to go and it went into the oil and, uh, and later caused uh, the explosions and fire. All right, so here is the plan. DTE says 40 to 50% of their customers will be back with power sometime late this morning. They're essentially going to start piggybacking and rerouting power supplies to those customers. The other customers are going to be powered off of this thing, this portable substation. They're going to park this thing underneath the power lines and then start just dovetailing and bringing power lines down to this to get juice up. That will get the rest of the power in and hopefully they'll have a better idea of when that process will be completed sometime around noon. I know this is an annoying, inconvenient situation for everybody at Rod and Rhonda, but I did ask and you can power a microwave and a blow dryer off this thing. A couple of essential elements when you're getting ready in the morning, but you make right. it sound simple, but what the intricate work that they have yeah. to do there to get that power restored. Yeah. They look like they have a good yeah. plan though. We'll leave it all to the experts. Yes. Nick, thank you. It is 636 everyone. We're also following stories from all across Metro Detroit for you this morning. Yes, we are. They come to us from Trenton, Romulus and Romeo, and that is where two teens there in Romeo will return to the courtroom today in the murder case of Stephen McAfee. A 19 year old McAfee went missing in 2016 and then the remains of his body were found in two different locations in Ray Township. Andrew Fiaco is charged with murder while his ex-girlfriend Yvette McDonald is also charged as an accessory. They are both charged with mutilation of a body and lying to police. He talked to you about having spoken to Stephen's mother. Correct. What did he tell you about his conversation with Stephen's mother? Uh, he indicated that uh, there was a uh, conversation they had via text message uh, and he informed that Stephen's mother that he had uh, actually had physical contact with him but he admitted to me that he had lied about that. The hearing for Fiaco will continue today in Romeo. In Romulus now a pilot for Delta Airlines traveling from San Diego to Detroit saw something a little strange Wednesday as he was landing at Metro Airport. The pilot said a drone came so close to the plane that he could tell officers the color of it and the number of propellers that it had. The flight landed safely at the airport, but there is an investigation underway now to determine exactly why that drone was higher than the regulated 400 feet and if it entered the airspace at the airport. 
And over in Trenton, we have a special story for you. A young girl with special needs saved her own money so that she could buy a bicycle, only to have that bicycle stolen. But some local heroes came to her rescue. Two Trenton police officers bought her a brand new bike. Well, how kind is that? Yeah, it's very nice. It's very nice. Time now, 638, everybody. Let's send things over to Jason and see what he's got coming up in the carport. Some special guests in studio with us this morning. Indeed, from a graphic novel to the movies to a musical coming up, we're talking RoboCop with the people who brought it to the small stage. Plus, we're giving away tickets. Hank? Brewing up some high quality coffee like the pros, but in the comfort of your own home. Well, this product claims it can do just that, but does it really work? We're going to put it to the test right after the break. Sky Forge. Oh, welcome back, everybody. So all week long, we have been testing these as seen on TV products to see if they actually live up to the claims. Yes, and it is finally here. Today, our consumer investigator, Hank Winchester, tested out something I'm very excited about, the Ninja Coffee Bar, to see if you can really get a coffee house coffee drink in the comfort of your own home. Coffee brewed by the pros, well, it certainly tastes good, but it can cost you a pretty penny. What if you could recreate that experience in the comfort of your own home? Well, this product claims it can do just that, but does it work? The Ninja Coffee Bar System. A cup of coffee. Pod-free enables you to use your favorite coffee grounds. A latte. And everything in between. Cappuccinos. The Ninja Coffee Bar promises to do it all and even advertises as being better than a coffee house experience at home. Looks like it has stage presence for your home counter. We took it to baristas here at Urban Coffee Bean in Detroit to put this product to the test. Rich brew. Let's, yeah, who doesn't want to be rich? Sure, sounds good. It's going to try to extract as you go down through these buttons, classic, rich, over ice brew, uh, down to the end, Cafe Forte is going to be a particularly strong. Yeah, so it's going to concentrate the flavors. Tell me what you think of that coffee. That's pretty solid. Really? You think yeah. so? It doesn't do a terrible job of extracting the flavor. Okay. But there's a hitch in the brewing. You can't adjust the heat. The instruction manual says that if you want your coffee hotter, just heat up your mug. A feature we did like, the drip stop. You can pour a cup while it's still brewing, and it also prevents dripping after you're done, keeping your counter nice and clean. That's actually a pretty useful feature. I've never seen that before. Though. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good, good idea. We yeah. like that. That's a great feature. Next, we tried to make a latte using the frother. So frankly, this is taking forever. The tool on the machine doesn't actually heat the milk while it's frothing. Basically just whisks milk, but it doesn't heat it. That's, so that's cold. We found this machine really isn't going to help you whip up that specialty drink you may be craving. It's not what you're gonna get from your local barista or no. from a coffee house. To be espresso, uh, it has to be made through the pressure of an espresso machine. So for the price of $180, can we give it the stamp of approval? We have mixed feelings. For a regular cup of coffee, the Ninja Bar worked just fine. But if you're looking for that coffee house specialty drink, not so much. I would go out for espresso based drinks because the cost of an espresso machine even on the lower end is several hundred dollars and it's hard to make the consistency that you find in a typical shop that has a very uh, well built machine for that purpose. And if you want more information about this product, we have everything you need to know. You'll find it all on the Help Me Hank page right at clickondetroit.com. I'm Hank Winchester. Back to you. Hmm. Okay, so a mixed, mixed reaction. Yeah. I mean, there's something to be said about, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't stop it when it comes. <laughs> just right there in the middle of the segment. My apology. <laughs> well, there's something to be said. You though. did, you'd okay. snabbed, you'd sneeze dab. <laughs> There, there's something to be said about going to a coffee shop and getting that experience yes. and the smell and, and all that stuff to go along with it. And so it sounds like you might still want to do that if you really want to yeah. have not just the experience, but that absolutely that type of coffee, specialty yeah. coffee. So coming up at eight o'clock this morning on Local 4's Facebook page, a little Facebook Live, Hank is going to be handing out samples from the Ninja Coffee Bar to our coworkers in the newsroom to see what we think. And when it comes to coffee, uh, 
our newsroom definitely drinks a lot of coffee <laughs> around here. So uh, our opinions certainly have a lot of merit. Yeah, I can't wait to test this out. But, you know, we like going to regular coffee shops as well. So we've got some good ones here in Detroit. And then in part five of our As Seen on TV product test. Can't wait for this one. Yes, tomorrow I'm going to see just how well the pocket hose works. Is it worth your money? That is the big question. And does it really work? Our director has it. And what she had to say about it might change your mind. So we're going to have that coming up tomorrow at 6 a.m. The pocket hose. It seems very fascinating. And you tested it. So I did. You have an opinion. I tested it out of my house. I'm not going to give my opinion just yet. You'll okay. have to wait until tomorrow to see it. But it was a lot of fun testing it out. And I actually, no, I'm not going to say that. You're going to have to wait. <laughs> no need for a hose, though, yeah, today. Yeah, you don't have to water the lawn <laughs> today yourself. Uh, yeah, I've, I've tried it in the past, too, so I'll talk about that tomorrow as well. Right now, what we're going to talk about is a steamy start to the day. Uh, we're averaging near 70 degrees as you head out the door. And here you see a nice line of showers and a few thunderstorms moving across the area. Nothing violent or severe. These are elevated storms, and so we're not seeing any severe weather with these. Just some downpours with a little bit of thunder and lightning. But what we're really going to be focusing on today is one of two things. And first, we're watching sunshine and at least the potential for that. You can see there have been breaks in the overcast to our side. Southwest, but those are filling in. So we have to see if we get any sunshine in here, because if we do, then we warm up more and that gives us more violent updrafts into these thunderstorms. And I'll tell you why that's important in a second. So as you move through the morning, we have the, the current wave moving through. We have another wave coming in with this warm front. That's the front edge of some even steamier air, if you can believe it, that'll be moving through during the morning and early afternoon hours. It's behind this front that we see the potential for severe storms. And then these continue into the early evening and then they kind of end as we move into the mid evening hours. Aside from that sunshine, the other thing we're watching is wind shear. These blue arrows are winds at the surface. These purple ones are winds aloft. If we can get those violent enough updrafts, if we get that sunshine, we're going to see a lot of change in the wind direction as we go up. And that could cause rotating thunderstorms. Now, not every rotating storm causes a tornado, but it's just something that we have to monitor. So severe wind gusts, the primary concern, along with lightning, uh, torrential downpours with these things. And again, we have to monitor that tornado threat, which will be a lot uh, largely dictated by how much sunshine we get. So low to mid 80s for a high today. And again, it's going to be real steamy. And then tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Uh, most of us will actually be in the mid to upper 70s. Uh, Saturday, a scattered afternoon shower or storm. Sunday, warmer and mostly sunny. Then mostly sunny came on Monday for Eclipse Day. So we'll be able to see what here in Detroit will be a partial eclipse. All right. Thank you, Paul. Well, that weekend looks really nice, too, but definitely want to watch out for today. Those scattered showers. It's going to be tricky travel. Luckily, right now we're not dealing with any accidents, but as that rain comes, it's going to be slippery out there. Be careful. Slow down. Now let's take a look at some construction over on the east and westbound lanes of I-96 between Livernois and the Davison. One lane block there starting at 9 a.m. This construction wrapping up at 3 p.m. just before your evening commute. And then on eastbound I-96 between in the Novi area between between Novi Road and M5 one lane block there. However, this is happening this evening. Won't slow you down too much. 9 p.m. wrapping up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Now let's get a live check at our roads right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. This is I-94 right near Southfield Freeway and that is all we've got. Over to you, Jason. A Detroit icon that helped bring the Motor City to the big screen is heading to the small stage. Shatter alive, you are coming with me. Part man, part machine, all cop. Today, Robocop the musical returns for a run at Detroit's City Theater. And joining me this morning, the show's creator and lead, Sean May, and director Tommy LeRoy. How's it going, guys? Good. Good. Very thanks good. for having us. Well, thanks for being here. I see you've brought some propage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so basically, RoboCop is giant and made of steel, but if you're an actor, you can't wear that stuff. So uh, what we brought here is uh, a sample of Robo shoulders, uh, super lightweight, made of foam. Uh, me being RoboCop, I'm certainly thankful that this is not <laughs> made of steel. You and I have talked before. Uh, the movie is celebrating uh, 30 years and one month, exactly. Today. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was blown away, not to pun, but back when I saw this when I was 16 in the theater, I, I just about lost my mind. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was the impetus for creating the show. I mean, when I was a kid, all I knew it was about Detroit, and there was this awesome half-man, half-machine protecting our city, and I wanted to be that. So. I, I feel like I saw the trailer for it during The Fly with uh, Jeff Goldblum, no, and I was like, that looks dumb. And then I saw the movie, and I was like, that was awesome. Uh, what's the response been to the show? 
Great. I mean, this is now our sixth year, our fifth production in six years. Um, and uh, I mean, they, we, we keep having enough of an audience to keep doing it. So it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. Every year we add more pieces to it. Mm -hmm. I uh, try to update the humor, comment on what's going on in Detroit, because it's not just a show about RoboCop. It is a show for Detroit, about Detroit. And this year we added a band. Yeah, live band. We see you here in uh, rehearsal footage. Yeah, because the, the movie, what people forget is that the original movie was extremely satirical. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. about pop culture and society and I would imagine this can be a vehicle for commenting on current events yeah yeah I, I mean there was a lot of corporate greed in the original movie too and so there's there's a lot of comment uh, commentary on uh, you know class system and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that so it's a lot of fun and we may or may not comment on uh, <laughs> the current times and who uh, people have voted for uh, president chances <laughs> are we may yeah. so where, where can somebody actually see the show be in the live audience uh, the City Theater, uh, downtown, located inside Hockey Town, across from Comerica Park. You can't miss it, um, uh, right there underneath the marquee. Uh, we're really happy to be in that space again for our third production and just want everybody to come have a laugh. We need a laugh in these times, don't Tell we? Tell me about it. Uh, <laughs> give me a dead or alive, you're coming with me. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. We're giving away four tickets to Robocop the Musical for Saturday night. Head to the Local 4 Facebook page to enter. Guys, thanks. Thank, Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. All right, let's get back over to the desk. Yeah, All looks right. like it's going to be a good show, right? Yeah, it does. Three right. years running. Apparently, it is a very good show. Mm -hmm. Jason, thank you. 6.51 is your time now, and we've got your source to watch for coming up next. Keep it here. Come see what... Welcome back, everyone. We are following breaking news out of Plymouth this morning. 4,000 people waking up in the dark this morning after a DTE substation caught fire last night. Thankfully, no injuries were reported after this fire and explosion, but DTE does expect to have 40 to about 50% of customers restored by sometime later this morning. And breaking news out of Southwest Detroit. We're following a deadly accident. Investigation is underway. This is Junction just south of Fort Street where the accident happened. What we do know is that a woman in her 30s died in this crash. Junction in that area may still be closed for that investigation. We still don't know the cause of the accident. And breaking from Detroit's east side, two cars are a mangled mess after an accident. Uh, right here on your screen, we are looking and working to find out what caused this accident and the extent of injuries for those who are involved. The man convicted of killing 22 year old Chelsea Brock will be sentenced today on a different crime. Daniel Clay was found guilty of sexual assault that happened last June in Monroe. He will be in court and we will bring you the very latest later this morning. Little League World Series is tonight in Williamsport. Gross Point, Woods, Gross Point Woods Shores face Lufkin, Texas. It's a double elimination, so good luck to them. Tonight's game is at 7 o'clock. Paul, over to you. Yeah, hey, Rod, showers and a few thunderstorms are actually rolling through the area. We have a nice, well-developed line that you can see that right now splitting the area. Quickly zooming in, we have one that's just come through Monroe, heading toward Estro Beach, Rockwood, that area. Now as we move further north, you can see what's affecting southwest Wayne County right now and moving out of the Ypsilanti area and toward Plymouth as well, where those guys are working on that DTE substation. Then we have another band of pretty solid rain moving out of Livingston County toward northwest Oakland County and into parts of Genesee County. So through the day, we have the showers and storms this morning. They've become a little more scattered this afternoon, but the trade off is this afternoon storms could be severe. So we will stay on top of it and keep you updated through the day. Kim. All right, well, that rain is coming in, so definitely want to watch out for your morning commute, but we are looking good right now. This is a look at Southfield Freeway right at I-96. Light traffic volumes in this area. Nothing you need to worry about here. Accident free on our freeway, so that's All a great right. news. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can keep it that way with this rain moving in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, today could be a little tricky. And we saw Later what today. earlier in the week when rain moved in. Yeah, yeah. So be safe out there. Don't everybody. forget the umbrella. Right. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a good day.